Cool. So I think I think that was the last part for this, but there's one other fun thing that we can do um, that uh, I just wanted to show just because it was it was interesting. So if you want to go back to the tab here. Mm -hmm. um, so you, so I don't know if you are familiar with inductors or if you guys out there have heard of inductors. Um, but uh, you might be curious had, how to add an inductor to the circuit. Um, an inductor is uh, another name for um, like a solenoid. So if you have some coil of wire that, that's, or you might call it an electromagnet. Um, so that's that's a, a kind of, of solenoid. It's a kind of inductor. Um, so I think if you go down to the to the very end, uh, there's a code. There's a code, and then there's a demo. So if you just want to do the demo, real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, Can I go past it? Let me go up a little bit, yeah. Yeah, just for fun, step nine. There you go. Oh, okay. Uh, is it the second link, I think? Yeah. It's just run the demo. Yeah, so now we have this crazy thing. So there's a battery, there's a capacitor. There was a, there's still a resistor over here, but now there's this crazy thing, which is an, an inductor. Mm -hmm. And so if you, so go ahead and connect the capacitor to the battery. Okay, so, so what happened? We got charge instantaneously. Yep, so this is kind of like the very beginning of the, the, the activity we did earlier. Right. Because there's no resistor here. But now when this thing goes over here, um, something interesting will happen. I'll so refresh it so we can look at it. Sure. There we go. Charge up. Oh. <laughs> That's fun, isn't it? So what happens is that the capacitor now is acting like a battery, and it's trying to push charge through this, this other part of the circuit, right? And so some of the... You know, so if you're pushing current through this resistor, then that resistor is going to heat up. It's going to lose that energy. Um, so you expect over time that you're going to that things are going to go down to zero. But this inductor is interesting because uh, the more current it has going through it, the larger a magnetic field it has, and it can actually store energy in that magnetic field. And so what happens is that the energy stored in the capacitor um, it kind of gets discharged through putting current through this loop, but then that causes a lot of this energy to get transferred to magnetic field energy here. And then this acts as the battery, because it has all, uh, most of the energy. And then it kind of drives the current through the circuit. Uh, and it goes back and forth until, until all the energy gets, gets uh, uh, used up in the resistor and, and the current zero. Um, so just for fun, there's a, a code that you want to, if you want to look at. What were you going to say, Blaine? <coughs> Yeah, that's cool. I actually hadn't seen that before. <laughs> so depending on what kind of physics class you're doing, this, so this is what's called an RLC circuit. So the L is 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 uh, the inductance of the inductor, which I know probably doesn't mean much to <laughs> a lot of people listening to this, but um, but this is an RLC circuit. Um, so we can just show the, show off the code for a second and just kind of yeah. see how that works. And the thing about inductors is that the voltage difference across an inductor is equal to uh, a constant times the change in the current. Mm. So that makes them behave very differently from resistors or capacitors. And so, so this is the code. So here, if the battery is connected, it charges up instantaneously, just like we did initially. But then this part now is very different because it, we've got this inductor here. And so now, uh, let's see. So now, not only do we have to, uh, not only do we have to sort of uh, increment the charge. So this part looks the same as before, right? Yeah. So there's some current. There's some time step. We're going to change this. How much charge is on the capacitor, depending on how much current is coming out of it. Um, so now. Before we had charge being depleted in this um, in this if statement or in this else statement, 
from the capacitor, but here it's being charged from the inductor? Well, initially there's no current in the inductor. I mean, one of the differences with this code is that not only do we have to do this plus equals things with Q, now we have to do plus equals with I as well. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the biggest difference. And initially the current through the inductor is zero. Um, but over time, it's going to get larger and larger according to how much voltage is on is on this inductor. And so, um, so this this line of code here says the voltage of the inductor, because you know on on the right hand part of the circuit they're all connected together. So the voltage of the inductor can only be the the voltage on the capacitor plus the potential drop across the resistor. Mm -hmm. And so once you have the voltage on, on the inductor, that tells you how much the current is changing because the voltage drop across the inductor is related to how much the current is changing. And so you can solve for how much the current should change based on that voltage. And then once you know what the current is, how much the current has changed, well then you do that over again because we run the draw function over and over again. You use that value up here again the next time. And that tells you how much charge is, is coming off of that capacitor. In discharging. So this current can be positive or negative. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so initially the capacitor has. Uh, so here's a pop quiz. So if we go back to the circuit. Uh huh. You're gonna hate me at the end of this. <laughs> All right. So That's here we go. So if we go back to the circuit and we ch we connect the capacitor to the battery. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is. One of these plates is positively charged, the other one is negatively charged. So we connect it to the battery. Which mm -hmm. one is the positive plate? Which one's the negative plate? Um, is the positive one the bottom one? Mm, no. So electrons in this top plate, yeah. they're going to want to move to this the positive terminal of the battery, right? Mm -hmm. So if the electrons on the top plate are leaving, they're going to, there will be a net positive charge on the top plate. Oh, yes. okay, yeah. So the electrons are gonna get sucked into the, they're gonna get sucked into the positive end of this battery and the electrons on the negative end of the battery are gonna get shoved in onto this bottom plate. So the top mm -hmm. plate's positive, the bottom plate's negative. And so when this is positive here, this charge, that means that the top plate has a positive charge on it. But as it discharges, what will happen is that um, as soon as you connect it, then the negative charges here will say, gosh, I want to be on the positive plate because that's um, attracted to that. And so it's going to sort of go around the circuit. The negative charges are going to go around the circuit. I can't do this around the circuit <laughs> yeah. and neutralize the positively charged plate. Mm -hmm. But then they're going to keep piling on until this plate is actually negatively charged. And so what's going to happen is that the charge on the capacitor is going to go from this all the way down to negative mm -hmm. uh, and, and back and forth again. So that's what's happening really is that, is that uh, the charge is really uh, changing around quite a bit in the circuit. There we go. And so initially the, cu the current is in one direction. Sorry, that, that's the direction of the electrons. The current would be like this. <laughs> I can't do this. Like that. So that's where the current would be like. Uh, but, then it'll, but then once this top plate is negatively charged, the current will be going in the opposite direction. So that's why the current goes from positive to negative, things like that. Um, so there's a lot going on there. Uh, but uh, you can see the code there. The thing that I love about this program is that, uh, do you see any calculus in there? No. No, okay, so normally you have to analyze these things with calculus, but the nice part about writing a program is you can let the computer uh, do the calculus for you. So the computer is, is calculating all, all this stuff, every step, and giving you the solution. And so no calculus is required. But what you can do, in any case, is you can, you can have the program, you can change the parameters, uh, and you can just kind of see what it does. So if you increase the resistance, increase the capacitance, for certain values, uh, this won't oscillate anymore. 
for example. So if the, resist if the resistance is too big, you're going to lose all that energy right away, and you won't wiggle around as much. So um, it's like the the spring. Yeah, exactly. Damned just like the spring thing we just did. <laughs> the only only that the parameters are are uh, are different. You know, it's mm -hmm. charge and and current and things like that. So that's one of the things you can do with the program is just kind of play around with the value. So I encourage you guys to try that out. Um, but we hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope I didn't put you on the spot too many times in front of the audience. Um, it's good. All right, cool. All right, well, thanks, everybody. So until next time, subscribe. For goodness sake, subscribe. I don't know where the button is. <laughs> Find the button. <laughs> click subscribe. Maybe it's here. Maybe it's there. I don't know. I Just it's subscribe. Usually down here? I think it's in the top right. Oh, okay. But what is this the top right for them, or is that the top right? I don't even know. They'll figure it. They'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. if, if you, you like can do this, this, you can definitely yeah find this for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thanks, everybody.